Now what we'd like to do, uh, that now you've seen basically a brief overview and a history of the shadow grinders, what we'd like to talk now about is uh, all the many technical aspects that really make these grinders unique. Uh, yep. Todd and I are going to demonstrate quite a few things, hopefully you'll learn a lot. And uh, Todd, let's get started with the dosing unit. Okay, I'll do that. Uh, we'll show you on the E7, even though it's got the same doser on the E10. Uh, first, the very unique features, when you dose your coffee, it drops straight down. You don't miss. So I'll just I'll pull fast to show you. Look how quickly and neatly that is. Neatly? Is that a word? Neatly is a word today. <laughs> For today's purpose, neatly is a word that works well. Yep. Uh, we'll look inside the grinder here. I want to show you some of the features on this. Here's your adjustment to adjust the amount of grams it's going to pull per shot. It's anywhere between, you can dust it, you can adjust it exactly between 5.5 .5 and 9 grams and it's very easy to adjust. Mm -hmm. Now you also notice that it's easy to get in here and clean out. Let's say you put a vacuum cleaner, you can suck this all right out. A lot of other grinders will have other guards in that. Now this one's the automatic grinder. This, this is, this, when this goes up, that'll turn the grinder off. The electronic versions and the manual versions do not have this, so you even have more accessibility in there. Well, the, the other unique thing is a lot of the a lot of the people when they talk about grinders, talk about it pulls to the left or it pulls to the right. It almost sounds like driving a car, but what they mean is the actually believe it or not that the grind shoot to the left or shoot to the right to be prepared. Um, the other unique thing about the grinder is the way it's designed and built. The the dosing unit here, there's actually a, as you saw in there, there's a dosing star. Now the other thing is on the bottom of that dosing star is something called a stable. Now the stable's purpose is to ensure that the the doser and the lever they are rectified and we'll get into rectified again when we talk about the motor but basically what rectified means is that the dosing unit and the shaft that turn it are perfectly perpendicular the other nice thing about that is is that a lot of people talk about how the grinder doses it makes a very clean sweep it's not going to leave a lot of grinds in the bottom of that so it's it's yeah. actually a great feature. It's yeah, unique. By being rectified, it doesn't wear out early. Yeah. It'll last longer. It just means that the bolt is perfectly perpendicular to the rest of the unit. And quickly from behind the grinder, we'll grab one of our, what would they call this in the movie business? Props. This is a prop. Yeah. And what this is, as you can see there, there's the dosing spring. Now the cool thing about the dosing spring, it's it's unique. Uh, it's We get so many calls, a lot of them just have a goofy little spring. This is actually, you can see, is very well made. Uh, the other ones will have a spring, something you might see like on a screen door or something like that, just a wound spring that goes between here and here and tends to fall off. This actually has a lifetime guarantee on that. Um, and another thing, it's really easy to get at if you ever need to change it, which probably is not going to happen. As you can see, though, the lever and the spring. Okay. We got the spring. All right, we got the spring. Let's go, let's go let's I want to show something more fun. All right. All right. We <laughs> talked enough about the spring. So, yeah. Okay, I want to talk about... The grinder adjustment and what we have inside of here. Sure. This, this is the real cool stuff. Okay. Well, the bean hopper, of course, has a little door on here. You can uh, so you can close that and pull this right off. I'll move that out of the way, Tom, so I'm we don't to... spill the beans like that. <laughs> All right. I'm going to grind the beans out of here so I can show you inside. So notice how quiet. It's quiet. Yeah. I'm gonna clean up our mess just for ten minutes. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Now let's kind of, for example, let's say you accidentally dropped a, there was a stone in here. Sometimes you get stone in with the beans and you want to get inside the burrs to get that stone out. Take the bean hopper off. Take a vacuum cleaner if you don't want to grind them up because there's a stone in there. So just suck the beans out. This comes off here. And I, you can see the uh, uh, little acorn nut here, which... Uh, well, that's unique too. The acorn nut, what that does is there's nothing sharp there. There's nothing sticking out. It's a safety feature, which... Of course, is one of the reasons that everything's NSF approved is because there's a lot of safety features. If you notice on the front of the grinder too, this is your grinder adjustment. It's really easy to adjust. Okay, if you want to go finer, you go to the right. If you want to go coarser, you go to the left. The other thing is once you get it all adjusted, you don't you can't turn as far as some of the other grinders. A lot of the other grinders, you've got a handle here which is very hard to adjust. You've got to you got to really pull on it. This is just very simple. It's almost like a set it and forget it type of grinder setting. I know that's from uh, somebody else famous in the uh, infomercial industry, but we'll say the set it and forget it. Yeah, another nice feature about this then is if when you set the grinder up just right for your espresso, you use two screws on here. You can take these two screws off, 
Then you move the handle adjustment lever so it's facing forward. And then you put the screws back in. That way you know where your start setting is all the time. So let's say you have a coffee shop and you're, somebody calls and says, well, you know, my espresso isn't good. You find out that for some reason they have it pushed all the way over here and they don't know enough to recalibrate. You say, well, push it back to the center, start from there. Uh, the guys in Australia that sell these Chiato grinders love that feature. That said, they save them a lot of time. Yeah. Okay, so, so we're back to, let's say the, the, cov or the, uh, the stone gets in there. You've got to get it out. So you take out three screws, pull this out, and now you have access to everything. There's your burr, your bottom burr, and your top burr. You clean it out, vacuum it out, and then you can put it all back together again. So it takes no more than maybe two minutes. Yeah. Another thing I want to show about this, when you adjust the grind size on this, the grind setting, you'll notice that with, there's no threads exposed. Everything is internal in here. So you don't get any coffee caught in there, and it stays nice and smooth forever. Well, the other cool thing is what happens when you put it back together. Oh, put it back together. <laughs> you don't have to recalibrate it. That's what? E that's exactly where it was before. Okay. Okay. There's the, the reason I'm, I'm kind of surprised by that, and of course we knew it was going to do that, but um, is the fact every other grinder, what you have to do is when you put it back together, after you clean it, or if you change the burrs, you have to actually go back and recalibrate the whole thing. This, once you take it apart, you clean it, when you put it back together, it's right where you left it. it it's very unique in the industry. A lot of people at the trade show are completely amazed by that. Uh, it's, a, it's a really neat feature. Yep. Uh, another nice feature about uh, in regards to cleaning is with these bean hoppers, there is no uh, guards inside the bean hopper. So when you want to clean them, you can get right in here and wash the whole thing right out. There's nothing in the way. Yeah. We, that's also nice. And because it have that little acorn nut on there, they're able to get the NSF approval and it give you this feature. They're so pretty they're, smart. Yeah, they're the only, they're the only ones that they, they really make they, they really thought these out, as you can tell, everything's pretty easy to clean. Um, the next thing we want to go into is uh, we're gonna get into a, a very important technical aspect of the grinder. Um, and there's gonna be a lot of good information here. And we're going to go into some detail about the motors now. Okay. Um, this is one of the motors that, you know, is that we took one yep. of the grinders apart. Yep, and what you, you'll find, first of all, it's mounted on rubber mounts here, uh, which really keeps it quiet. And if, if you kind of take a look up here, you'll notice, look how this, look how this, look how this moves in there, okay? This, uh, the motor, and the, uh, the top burr plate are not actually screwed right onto here, so it's, it's a loose fitting on that. And on, on the rubber, so it stays nice and quiet. Very unique in well, the industry. Well, there's a lot of, I mean, just the way that works like that, the, the other difference between this and some of the other motors is the fact that the other motors are actually designed, engineered, and manufactured to be mounted right to the grinder. Um, and, and so what happens is, is quite a few things, but Todd's going to go into some more detail about what makes these grinders are called rectified and what is that what's rectified yeah. when it pertains <laughs> to these grinders and again like we said before with this with the stay bolt uh, the motors are perfectly perpendicular pretty close to perfectly perpendicular yep. with the motor and therefore what's well, within one one hundredth of a millimeter which is the best in the industry and so that'll give you very consistent grind and if you don't have any problems with thermal expansion on these because the way the whole thing is built, this is all put together with this at the factory, not mounted at uh, Chiato. So they make this whole unit there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to stay focused on the motor, and Todd's going to show you a couple things about that. The, the other neat thing is, uh, and we'll just stay focused on here, and Todd can show you this is spinning, but the other neat thing is actually the way the ball bearings are mounted. There's two ball bearings inside the motor. And okay. normally, the way most manufacturers do it right now, there's the two ball bearings, one on the upper and one on the lower. Um, and what they do right now, the, the, the ball bearings in order to run properly, they need to have a wavy washer, it's called in there, or the Belleville spring. Usually right now in all the other manufacturers, for cost saving reasons, it's put into the upper belt. Now what that does, that wavy ring in the upper belt, when this is spinning like this, what it does is it, it increases noise that's you know in the other manufacturers and it also adds to the well it, it decreases the stability of the grinder with Chato's design tool and assembled by manufacturer and what they do is they put the wavy washer in the lower bell and this upper bearing is locked and what that does is it does three things number one it keeps everything rectified and perpendicular 
The second thing that it does is it reduces the noise, and then because of the design and the engineering of it, what it's going to do is going to force the the air, the thermal expansion downwards, and what that's going to do is going to result in a cooler motor overall. So the, a lot of the things about the engineering of this are really unique, and that's and just a consistent grind. A very consistent grind. Yep. So even if the grind has been operating for a while, the grind size will stay the same. Next, we're going to go into. We'll talk. We've talked about the motor. We've talked about the uh, the doser. Uh, we've talked about the hopper. What else do we need to get into as far as the technical aspects, Todd? What about the cleaning of it? We talked about that. Yeah, the cleaning. I think that's uh, that does pretty much everything. Yeah, that really is it. Um, yep. We're going to go uh, in, in upcoming videos. What we're going to do here in a little bit is we're going to go through each grinder individually. So uh, now that you've learned a little bit about the history, all the great technical advantages, uh, why we brought this grinder here, and why we're so proud of it, and thanks.